All right, so with the LCAT uh, reasonably wired up for testing, it's time to move on to the actually exciting stuff, and that's the BMS works. Uh, so we have our version 0 0.01 uh, BMS testing thing hooked up. This is actually a different project, which we sort of went, eh, it can talk. Uh, this roughly the same serial port voltage as modules do. Uh, so this is a board which has a 3.3 volt regulator, uh, which is currently wired up to feed uh, power to all the BMS boards. Uh, the way these uh, Tesla BMS boards work is they have an isolated uh, bus which is just floating, uh, so the potential of this, uh, this wiring is set by whatever this is connected to, not the actual battery pack. Uh, it's uh, uh, opto isolated or radio isolated or something like that. It's not coupled uh, to the actual high voltage system. Uh, and uh, this board is plugged in and feed it, fed from my laptop over there. And uh, it's currently powering the boards uh, with 3.3 uh, volts. And uh, I've wired this up as best as I can. Uh, you have e these two uh, looms come from each end of a pack and uh, one end of a loom becomes, as far, as far as I've figured this wiring out, uh, courtesy of whoever made uh, this uh, schematic thing. Uh, this is uh, how we got it to work before. I've sort of uh, quickly, hastily wired it up for this uh, setup. So we have yellow and blue from one end uh, is our TX, yellow and blue from the other end is our RX. Uh, and there's uh, like a 50% 50, 50 chance that you get uh, uh, those right. Uh, because if you look at the schematic, you have yellow and blue going to uh, this uh, end there and that's going to be our uh, TX from the uh, module and then we have yellow and blue here which is RX to the module uh, so 50-50 uh, chance if this is going to work and uh, we should be able to just bring a serial console up this is going to bring up our uh, interface for module let's see okay the uh, uh, board is still responding that's good uh, I haven't tested this with uh, more than uh, one module, so let's uh, uh, do what the instructions say. Reset OK, and it's gonna. Oh, it's found a bunch of boards. There you go, first try. We're getting data. We're getting data from the boards. <laughs> oh, wow, I was not expecting that. Uh, so, right now it's just. Uh, uh, pulling and uh, configuring all the boards. Uh, it found, look at that, it found six boards. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Oh my God, that's, that is, <laughs> okay, that's genuine laughter. I was not expecting this to work on the literal first go. There are so many variables, so, like just for wiring there, that's a 50-50 failure point. Uh, I don't know, God, the 3.3 volt reg on this might be going up in smoke. It just worked. That's amazing. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can do some measurements. I have no idea what this is going to do with uh, more than one board. Uh, this is running, uh, let's see, uh, a more or less uh, carbon a slightly modified version of the Tesla BMS uh, uh, software we can find on GitHub. But look at that, we have cell voltages for what seems to be all the boards. Oh my god, I cannot believe this. First try, and we're talking to all of the modules. And you can see how bloody cold it is out high. Here, yeah, 12 degrees on that one, and the other one was, was what? 10 degrees? Yeah, 10.8 degrees. So, we actually have a way of sort of monitoring the cells right now. Again, this is like, this software was uh, pr programmed in like an evening with one module on the bench and we were like yeah we can get data from it let's move on it was never actually intended to uh, c communicate with more than one and not in this implementation that's really nice so let's uh, uh, plug in the charger and see 
if we can get some changing data on that. All right, charges now on. Might as well turn on the light in here, how pleasant. So, it's time to do some measurements. Can we see a change in voltage? I believe we can. So we're getting more volts per cell. Now this is, uh, again, this is such a one evening build of the software that uh, it's not going to be able to do anything live. I need to talk to uh, Matthias, the guy who's uh, my expert uh, hardware and software guy, and uh, we're going to have to get a slightly better version of this running for test before we get our actual uh, BMS prototype boards made, because I'm going to be playing around with this thing. Uh, thankfully, uh, this hardware uh, has a high current output, so I'm sort of hoping we can reuse this high current output as just a, a sort of dodgy uh, relay driver, then I'll have a relay uh, do the contactors, and if it like goes, uh, notices something goes wrong, it'll at least turn the contactors off. Uh, super unsafe, not safe for production, etc, etc, but it's going to let me play around a bit and actually charge the car. So, <laughs> I, I, I still am at a complete loss at how we managed to get this talking to all the six boards on the first go, in the middle of the night. If the camera was better, you'd see a bunch of stars up there, maybe some Aurora Borealis. It's pitch black, it's cold, it's wet, it's terrible, but we have a working, it's not a BMS, but it's a, a cell monitor system. And uh, this can give you guys a first glimpse at uh, uh, the uh, actual balance uh, and build of these uh, modules. So you can see we have, uh, this is uh, module 6 starting there, and it's uh, just putting it all the data because we were troubleshooting. And there we have the, the total uh, module voltage and uh, the voltage of all the cells. Uh, you, I think you do get more resolution for that, but it was spamming so much uh, uh, digits uh, out that uh, we just uh, filtered a bunch of it out. So we have about 3.52 on all the cells in that one. And then if we move up a bit, we have uh, 3.52, 3.53, and uh, there we go, 3.52. 3.52, 3.53, 3.53, and that's the start of a measurement cycle of that. Uh, so these uh, modules uh, uh, are really well balanced. Uh, I haven't actually really... This is actually the first time I've uh, measured uh, the cell voltages uh, on these modules. So they've actually uh, just been take, take, uh, taken into a vehicle. We did check uh, in the actual Tesla pack, uh, we, we did check the battery mod uh, voltages then, knew they were pretty good. But uh, since they've been removed, this is the first time I've uh, actually seen uh, the voltages. So, now I'm just going to tune the charger a bit. Uh, because we need to actually charge this uh, reasonably fully uh, to be able to uh, uh, actually set the charge voltage. Uh, because... Uh, uh, while the proper BMS is going to have a reasonable a charge, a charger management, this setup does not, never will. Uh, so I'm going to have to adjust uh, the output voltage of the charger to reasonably match uh, the fully charged voltage of these, uh, which is a lot less than what it's set to uh, for the lead acids, uh, because the lead acids, while well, they are 72 volts nominal, uh, they require a lot more voltage to actually uh, get charged. So you can see uh, our charge voltages are severely too high uh, for uh, this battery. We want to, to go no more than 72.0 volts. We don't want to go to 87.6. 87 uh, that's uh, shoulder going to cause a fire. Uh, thankfully, we have some really nice instructions uh, on how to adjust this. So, 
uh, various instructions go for uh, this adjustment board down here. Uh, this is where you adjust the charge, you adjust the voltage, you adjust the currents. Uh, so I'm going to have to have a decent play around with that. Hopefully it can actually go down to 72 volts without uh, uh, requiring major modifications. Uh, it's, it's not impossible that it's not going to go that low uh, because you would never want to charge a lead acid to such a low voltage. Uh, in that case I'm going to have to rebuild something probably on this board since I think that's what does all the measurements. Yes, we are in luck. This is all we need to adjust this charger. So you can probably hear even better than I how this thing is screaming along, pushing out everything it's got. Well, notice how our voltage is 64.63 volts. That's uh, going up because we're measuring right of the charger and it's pushing out current. The battery wants this voltage to be lower. So if we turn down the charge voltage the voltage goes down and the charger stops screaming because uh, it's no longer putting out all that it's got to give that means we're able to adjust this charger down to even uh, 64.3 volts and I can turn it back up if I want to uh, that means that we actually have enough adjustment range on this to give me uh, the uh, 72.0 volts uh, that I want out of it. Uh, now there's going to be some messing around with the automatics, it's uh, got uh, uh, IUI charging uh, which uh, I should have disabled uh, but I'm not entirely sure how it's going to handle that and it's also got uh, a so-called end charge mode where it will put out... Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how that works. You can see we have the uh, uh, end charge voltage there which is set very high. Uh, now I've adjusted it down as far as I can on the uh, adjustment potentiometer uh, but I'm not really sure when it goes into end charge mode. L like the way it's going to work it's uh, going to charge the battery a constant current up until it reaches 87.6 volts then it's going to sit at 87.6 volts until the current starts dropping down. When the current drops down to 3 amps, it's going to change from the uh, main charge voltage to the end charge voltage, uh, which you can adjust to whatever you want. Hopefully you can set it to less than that, uh, and uh, it's going to keep uh, charging at that 3 amp level uh, for uh, 6 hours or whatever you set it to. So it, it's uh, IUI, essentially. Uh, hopefully, I've disabled IUI by setting uh, the uh, IU slash IUI jumper there to IU. I'm hoping that uh, we're not going to have to deal with the end charge stuff at all because you don't want that on a lithium. And for the time being, we just want to get a stable 72.0 volt charge out of this thing. Oh boy, a lot has happened since uh, the last time we were filming the LCAT. Uh, so the keen-eyed viewer might notice uh, this horrible charger contraption, uh, which uh, is uh, the result of the original charger blowing up when I was tuning it. I uh, think either a rectified diode was a bit tired or I accidentally went over the current limit because it went foomph and uh, then it was no more of a board really is beyond repair. This is the worst EV charger. Yeah, this is one, two, three, four, five, six Delpo supplies of this. Some might be a Lenovo's. Uh, they have uh, one ground, no ground, no ground, no ground, no ground, no ground. Uh, so we have uh, basically five floating power supplies. That means you can just connect them in series. So we have uh, 12 volts, 24 volts, uh, 36 volts, 48 volts. Uh, whatever up to uh, 72 volts uh, out in these two terminals 
uh, straight from a page plus. Now, uh, PC page plus don't have uh, current limiting linear current limiting. They just shut off and go into tick mode uh, if they're overloaded. So, I have added uh, output resistance. We have one, two, three, five hundred million resistors, of which one is uh, switchable in and out. Uh, so we have, if a battery is discharged, we don't have that one in circuit. If it's getting charged, we can uh, gain another 33% current by just clicking that switch. Uh, these power supplies put out about 14 amps. One of them does 17, doesn't matter. Uh, and it, it actually seems to work quite well. It's extremely inefficient, uh, actually mostly because the power supplies suck. Uh, uh, it'll do... Uh, I've had it up to just about over 10 amps uh, uh, at the highest. It, it should uh, run roughly uh, end up at about 14 amps, which is rated output of uh, the weakest power supply uh, uh, on a quite discharged battery. So it should work reasonably well. Efficiency is about 75%, uh, including uh, this uh, resistor. Uh, but you actually don't lose all that much in this resistor since we, we only have like either 250 or 166 milliohms in this. Uh, so you lose like uh, 10 to 20 watts maximum uh, in this. Uh, most of the loss is just from uh, the painted plus. Uh, despite being fairly modern, uh, actually not being very efficient at all. I was surprised. I, I was expecting them to be... 80 plus, but actually uh, we're doing barely 80% by the time we get out of uh, uh, the power supplies themselves, which is weird. Uh, but yeah, a power input just goes into this big uh, chunking uh, screw terminal and uh, then into a big Shuko plug. Uh, now power output in this, of this thing is uh, pathetic. Uh, 14 amps is, you know, just over a kilowatt. As soon as the battery gets like slightly charged, uh, you know, where last I had it out before the technique tend to do some modifications, it was sitting at something like you know, 66 volts or so, and this thing was putting out, uh, you know, 7 amps. Uh, that's where I added you know, the extra resistor there. Uh, so, so this thing is dog slow, you know, a couple hundred watts. Uh, like uh, if we think about 600 watts uh, when I took it in, it was doing about uh, 800 watts when I started. Uh, I'm just having this thing because otherwise I'm going to have my lab pacer plus thing out of a van to charge, and that thing puts out a maximum of uh, 300 watts, and I need that thing inside to do my job. Uh, so this thing is basically just a replacement for uh, my lab power supply. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go through this thing eight. Again, it works way better than it deserves to. It works absolutely perfectly. You know, you have automatic fan control and all the power supplies. You just plug it in and go. Although it's very important that you actually uh, turn this on before you uh, turn on the high voltage battery uh, because there's no back feed protection. There's not even an output diode on this. Uh, so if you end up with a battery hooked up across these uh, and the power not being turned on, you're gonna have like random voltages across each of the power supplies. Let's say that uh, this one leaks a lot less than all these. Uh, then you're gonna get like 50 volts across that one and naff all about those and uh, that one's gonna go boom. Uh, so, you know, th th this thing's probably gonna go banging some really exciting way sooner or later, uh, but I don't care, you know. We have a 25 amp fuse. Uh, not not really too concerned. It's it's going to destroy itself, but uh, it's not going to bring anything else with it, essentially. But yeah, there you go. Uh, that's uh, how you turn six PC power plus into an EV charger, I guess. All right, I guess I have to show it working, or I'm never going to hear the end of it. So here we have the terrible charger uh, in the back of the LCAT. So we're going to put in slow. Uh, so the upstart procedure is uh, very simple, uh, well it's not actually, uh, so right now we have charger off, uh, battery off, so there's no voltage anywhere, this is completely dead. So here we have our uh, power meter and uh, main power switch for the charger, so uh, we're going to flick that and hopefully these all wake up. One of them sometimes doesn't want to go, yeah this guy. Doesn't want to go in the first go, but it usually wakes up a 
if you just pay cycle it once there you go fan is turning on that one so we have a slight bit of current flowing out of it just pairing all the electronics in the car yes so if we check the 8 bit voltage here we should have a 71 72 volts yeah 71.3 volts perfect so we'll put that into current mode this is measuring current on the negative output so our uh, idle consumption is 66 watts but that's including some crap in the car so uh, now since we have an 8 bit voltage this is essentially a bunch of pcs that are turned on that means we can connect our load because we're not going to be back feeding voltage into the power supplies so this is the uh, switch to turn on the uh, high voltage in the car that's the uh, contact is actuated and we are now charging 630 watts and if we flick the fast slow uh, oh yeah we're, we can look at the current so that's uh, 6.7 amps right now and if we go into fast mode 750 and we're up to 8 amps at 72 ish volts so these power supplies they have no load on anything other than the 12 volts so they actually have quite a bit of voltage drop on their own uh, one, uh, while they're under this kind of load so if we check the output voltage straight from a power supply so now uh, it's actually going to be quite significantly lower than it was before so now we only have a 69.4 volts 69.3 out of a power supply but uh, that's going to go up as uh, the charge progresses uh, as for what we're actually getting out of the uh, charger all in all uh, you're gonna have to take my word for it it's too difficult to measure one-handed uh, we're getting like 67.2 ish volts uh, in the battery pack over there and uh, uh, the connections for the charger are so stupid uh, you see we have two alligator clips black and red there it's it's just like a car charger uh, that's the uh, main positive from uh, the battery uh, post contact is that's the negative for both uh, uh, battery packs in the vehicle so yeah we're literally just clamping on and everything's covered in water because it's been uh, pissing rain all day oh that's no good oh well yeah there you go that's uh an l cat charging from uh six pc power supplies wired in series yay